Now, you live in a, a, a compound, a beautiful compound that I've never been invited to. Uh, do you, you don't get, I assume, no trick-or-treaters? Or is there any holiday, I'm sorry, Halloween plans for the holiday family? Um, we have some friends of ours that are uh, throwing a party for teenagers uh, that we're going to go over and Help chaperone, if you will. Nice. Gotta keep an eye, kind of keep an eye on the youngins. And uh, you're wearing a costume. Tell us what it is. Uh, we haven't actually. I was. We'd never. We were talking about this the other day. We there's. We we don't. For some reason, we haven't gotten invited to a uh, adult style Halloween party. What's well, so your attitude? Really? No. No. Yeah, I'm not coming to yours, but. Uh, <laughs> So we, we, we decided that maybe we will dress up tomorrow night. Um, so I'm not sure yet. It has, it's going to have to be kind of a quick uh, impromptu thing. Um, we even talked about dressing up. So Ethan, uh, my 16-year-old, and his girlfriend, I thought maybe we would beat them. So I'm going to have to get a wig, and uh, we will try to dress. It will really embarrass them, you know, I think, pretty well. So um, that's a potential option, but uh, – yeah, we don't. Uh, I see a lot of my friends, like Lance Berkman and Skip, and these guys. They go to these adult Halloween parties and pull off these amazing costumes. And I, you know, I've, I've uh, over the years I've thought, man, that'd be fun. Uh, but just continue to not get invited to an adult party. So, are you uh, taking suggestions? Because I have one. Yeah, let it rip. Let's hear. Uh, okay, it. Captain America. Oh, yes. Ooh. Come on, you get. You could. There's costumes. You're Matt Holiday. You got the wherewithal. You can find a Captain America, and you show up and you make a statement. Look at me. Yeah. I'm playing pickleball. I'm think, still Jim? in shape. I am yeah. Captain America. What's uh, What's Jim Hayes going to be? Um, what I've you? already said this. I am going. Uh, this is the first time I'm announcing this on the air. Oh. I am going. My kid. We're having people over. I am going as a guy who thought. The Cardinals would win the National League Central. Yeah. That's mm. my costume. Mm. That's a suck. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can see you. You have that uh, that strong superhero jawline. What about RoboCop? I feel like, remember RoboCop. that movie back in the day? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you kind of look like RoboCop. Is it too late uh, to get a RoboCop? I mean, how fast can Amazon get me a RoboCop yeah, it's too uh, late. outfit? You could just cut out some uh, cardboard and spray paint it yeah. silver. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea, Charlie. I'll check that out. Did you watch that movie back in the day? I did. I think I've, yeah, I mean, it's been a while, but yeah, yeah I think I, I remember that. Very good. Are you still on Twitter? Because I'm going to ask Twitter to send their suggestions to you if you'd like. I have an account, but it's uh, like it's not followed by anyone, and I've kind of just went under the radar. So I'll, I'll just I'll just see what you put up there. He's okay. on Instagram, All dude. Right. We're friends on Instagram, Jimmy. That's right. Yeah. Hang right. That's when you show off that you had a fancy dinner. Not. Yeah, well, you're showing off no, no. on Twitter about no, like dude, what your I thought is in Twitter. that moment. That's different. I'm not showing off that I have a thought. You That's totally yeah, you are. That's exactly what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, are you still doing the podcast? Uh, we've taken a break for a while. Uh, we've been on a we've been on a break. Uh, we got to the point where uh, I was uh, having to do a lot of the like, finding the guests, and uh, it was. It was it had gotten kind of hectic with all of our schedule, unless we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on. So we put it on pause. I don't think it's it's necessarily forever on pause, but as of now, we're we're in a we're in a pause. And then I think I've seen it on Instagram, but then also, is there a new Twitter account of the Holiday Hitting Brothers or family, whatever it is? And uh, so, is that Oklahoma State? Is that do you have your own kind of barn for hitting? It looks pretty sweet. What you guys are doing. Uh, the one, the videos so far have been at Oklahoma State, but uh, we're in the in the in progress of building our own cage uh, at the barn and at the house. So it should be done sometime by the end of this week. Um, but yeah, that those videos are at, at Oklahoma State, which is their cages are pretty uh, pretty amazing. So it's um, it's done over there. But yeah, we've we've been doing some stuff uh, on Twitter and Instagram for hitting um, just kind of documenting what the boys are doing and some of the drills we're doing and, and uh, have a little fun with it. Hey, we uh, we just had a, a fan drop us off a bunch of uh, McDonald's for us. And I'm oh. just – yeah, I know. They, they do it all the time. But uh, I'm just curious when the last time you ate McDonald's was. That's a good one. Honestly, don't know. Really? 
I, I honestly don't know. It's been a long time. I, you know, there was a lot of rumors there for a while where McDonald's had weird stuff in their hamburgers, and and, uh, and, and whether it was true or not, probably wasn't. Uh, once I, I get that sort of deal in my head, I don't eat a ton of fast food, anyways. But once I I I, uh, I hear some sort of rumor that there's something that they, you know, in the, in the burgers or their how they're made or whatever, I, I just kind of write them off. Uh, what so was it? Yeah, what was it? Was it the pink slime chicken nugget thing? Oh. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd heard, you know, something in the hamburgers was, I don't remember. But, I. yeah, you know, like I said, it, it's probably not true. But, I, I, you know, like I said, I don't need a ton of fast food. I, I'm trying to think of the last time I ate, like, true, like, uh, maybe I had In-N-Out Burger not, oh, yeah. not that long ago. But... Um, so yeah, I just don't, if I'm going to eat like crap, McDonald's isn't really necessarily my, my f- first choice. So does Stillwater have Whataburger? We do. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty huh? dang good. Yeah. 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 I, I, yeah, that's, that, that'd probably be one of the places if I was going to eat uh crappy, that'd probably be where I'd go in Stillwater. Matt, it's Cole here. Was, uh, yeah. was fan mail, hey, uh, was Hello. Was fan mail a big thing in your career? Like, would would a rep from the Cardinals or the Rockies come up to you with like a giant goodie bag and say, "Hey, so and so from Portland, Oregon, just sent you this"? And what kind of stuff would they send you? No, um, I didn't. No, I didn't do a good job with fan mail. I, I got overwhelmed. That kind of thing made me uh, a little overwhelmed. I know a lot of nice people and and probably a lot of great. Young people sent me cards to sign and, and maybe even balls or, or some different stuff to sign. And I just didn't do it. And I'm not a good human about that kind of thing. So I regret uh, maybe how I handled uh, fan mail. But I, I never got anything where the Cardinals or Rockies came walking in with a large blank and said, here's this from a fan so or a bag of McDonald's or anything like it seems like you guys get, but because um, <laughs> we're below. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I to answer your question, uh, yes, there was fan mail. Most of it's baseball cards. Most of it's collectors. Uh, most of it never got sent back. <laughs> so do you, do, you, do you just pitch it? <laughs> uh, I just let kind of whatever happened happened. Uh, <laughs> Can I just, I just say? So just disappeared. Yeah. I don't think. By the way, I don't think people are mad at you for doing that. I will say though, growing up, that was my thing. I yeah. sent so many cards to baseball players. I'm talking from yeah. from stars to random dudes, and I never. And when you're doing this, you're sending the self addressed stamped envelope, so you're spending two stamps, yeah, right? You already have the envelope ready to go, yep. and so I never held it against anybody that didn't send it back. But, like, to this day, I can remember every random player that actually sent one back. So, like, as a kid, you do remember that. But nobody's holding it against you. Yeah. No, I, I get it. I, uh, I'm i sorry to little Charlie. Um, you know, I just – Thank I, you. Uh, yeah, I just – like I said, uh, I'd see those giant stacks in, in, uh, in my little cubby thing, and I'd – I just was like, I can't do that. I can't, I can't, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't catch up. And then once you can't catch up, it causes, you know, a little bit of that angst where you're like, oh my gosh, I can't catch up. And then I just thought, you know what? I'm just not going to look over there. And just, <laughs> it'll go away. So the clubbies will eventually take it away, right? Yeah, somebody does. Somebody does. It eventually was not there anymore. So, <laughs> what, kids. what is the one food? I know you're a healthy guy. I remember you always watch what you ate. Um, but is there one food that's not good for you that you just have a tough time saying no to? Uh, crumble cookies. Yeah. Oh. Uh, those crumble cookies. I, well, thankfully, there's not one in Stillwater. Uh, but there is one in Oklahoma City. And occasionally, uh, for some reason, people bring them to my house and I have to uh, pull myself away or late at night. Uh, it seems to be calling my name. Um, so I just tell people from now on, if you bring them in my house, I'm going to throw them away. So um, it's a, uh, it's, I don't know if you guys have had those very much, but they're, they're pretty, pretty amazing, pretty addicting. And I'm sure they're 
horrible for me. So uh, that'd be the one thing I would say. Who brings them to your house? Just people show up at your estate? No, you know, like friends, like random uh, or like uh, Chloe Jackson's girlfriend. Like she'll be in Oklahoma City and she'll bring him a box of crumble cookies. And and those are like there's like twelve of them and they're, they're like huge. So you know, if she brought like two and they were for him. That'd be fine, but she'll bring a huge box of them, and then there they are in the living, you know, in the kitchen. So, um, yeah, stuff like that. You think like a six-year-old guy who showed up at your house and wanted to bring you crumble cookies would have a chance of scaling the fence and making it to your front door? Your hockey bob. I'm not talking about anyone in particular, <laughs> but just maybe a guy I used to work with. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he'd make it. I don't think he'd make it in. The, the snipers <laughs> out front would shoot you. They're going to look through your trash, though. They're going to find high, uh, baseball, baseball cards, cards, good food, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. All my letters yeah. from when I was a all kid. Charlie's letters. <laughs> even though, even oh though we're basically God. the same age, oh I still God. sent you those when I was uh, 22 <laughs> years old. Great. When, when you were covering yeah. him. Oh, yeah. for sure. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I remember when you, when you were first coming on last year, I remember asking you about, you know, your kids are stud baseball players. And you, you said, look, you're still the man of the house. You can beat him in every sport and all that and blah, blah. And I'm wondering. Because you're about to be what forty, what forty four? Was there a yeah. was there a time over the last year where you realized Jackson is now a better hitter than you are, or do you feel Whoa. like if you had the whole off season to train, could you still be a better big league hitter right now than your son Jackson mm-hmm. Holiday? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's passed, Charlie. I think I've had to. I think I've had to pass the torch on that one. Um, He's pretty good. I throw to him every day, and he's – he's. Uh, I think if I trained all off season, I think I could still uh, put up a reasonable season. Um, but I don't think it would be uh, anything to what he could do. So uh, he's – he's. Uh, I think he's passed me by there, but I still would dominate a wrestling match. Uh, <laughs> some of the things that are most important. You know, yeah. uh, Arm wrestling. Yes, arm wrestling. Uh, most lifts, I still absolutely dominate him in. Uh, uh, How about basketball? Pick up basketball. Uh, yeah, I mean, half court, I think I got him. I, I don't think, you know. He's practicing court. with Doug Gottlieb. The, t- typically, you don't play one-on-one full court. Yeah. Uh, so, I think, I'm, I think I'm safe there for now. Um, but, yeah, yeah, he's... He's uh, he's caught me in in a few few things, so uh, that's probably good though. You know, I mean, he's almost twenty, and I'm almost forty four. At at some point, he's going to need to pass. I don't know that he'll ever pass me in in wrestling. Me, I don't think he can ever. You know, at least for a while. What's your biggest <laughs> regret in your career? Wow! Wow! Whoa! Jeez, Louise. Holy smoke! Whoa. Throwing those cards away, probably. No. Roy Fire. Negative Nancy. Whoa! Whoa. Pete. Disappointing, Charlie. Charlie's, Charlie's, you know, like the the little Charlie's out there. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, okay. I thought you yeah. thought that Not I you. asked the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, okay, no, that was no, cool. Little little Charlie's, you know. No, I I think um, I think I, I think tell people, people all the time. I think I didn't enjoy it as much as I I, I should have. I, I, I put a lot of a lot of pressure on myself. I I I wore uh, the bad games pretty hard, and and I didn't enjoy the the good, the good, and the and the fun moments uh, as much as I should. I, I I was always on to the next play. Whether you know it was it was uh, if it did something well, it was almost like a, a relief more than like you know an enjoyment of it. Um, so probably that. I, I think I, I tell young players all the time that they should really enjoy their career and enjoy the the stuff because there's plenty of disappointment in baseball and there's when you're done playing, you know, you, you're, you can't replace it. And, and there's just nothing, you know, that replaces that, that opportunity to play pro sports and opportunity to be on a team and, and play and compete at the highest level. And so um, I, I tell, you know, particularly like some of the older guys that are starting to get into the back end of their career to, that, you know, they'll, they'll wish they enjoyed the last few years more. But for the most part, don't you think it was that kind of approach that you had through the bulk of your career that made you – the great player you were? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a uh, a double-edged sword on, in, in some ways that, you know, that was uh, 
part of who I was, but I think I could have enjoyed it a little more and, and, uh, and not taken it so hard at times. And, um, but yeah, like you said, I mean, part of that, that drive and, and, um, that, that the ability to, uh, to, to really kind of, you know, not get too uh, caught up in, in the, in the successes at all. Um, I think probably was part of why I was, I had the career that I did, but uh, I think there's a balance. I think you can do both. Um, and I, I think that that's something that I want to encourage my, my boys and, and my friends that that's, that's probably a better way to do it. That was going to be my next question is if you, talk to your sons about that. I'm just wondering though, also, don't you think people are wired differently? Like some people just can't sure. turn it off and some people can. No doubt. Uh, I think we're all built and wired differently. And some of it's part of the genius of each individual person and, and part of uh, what makes us us. But I do think that there's perspective to be had. And I think that, you know, uh, there's, there's a, uh, there's a healthy way to channel who we are that sometimes that whatever, whichever way we bend, I think it can get uh, unhealthy. Um, I think it can be channeled. It can be our greatest asset, but if channeled wrong, it can be our biggest detriment. So I, I think that there, there is a healthy way to, to channel um, things that, that, uh, you know, like I said, that could go either way. What if Jackson starts getting a bunch of fan mail and he doesn't sign it? Are you going to tell him to sign it? Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's he's done pretty well. He's way better. He's got to a way better start than I ever was. So he signs most of it uh, that I know of, and I see him. You know, he's he takes time to make sure he signs pretty much everything. So he's. Uh, I hope he doesn't grow weary uh, because you know nowadays the the card industry and the collecting industry is is uh, hot and heavy and at a pretty much an all-time high as far as I can remember. Well, they also send jerseys too, you know. And I'm not saying yeah. I did this, but you might get a jersey once in a while and you could take that jersey and when people ask you if you're a jersey, well, you have one handy. <laughs> 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 might yeah. be some little kids in like, yeah. you know, jersey, but, uh, you know, New Jersey, but uh, yeah. it is what some it is. Some guy sent me a jersey. I have one for you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, Patty, you were great, man. Appreciate you coming on. Happy Halloween. Have some fun, bud. Okay. All right. Good talking to you guys. See ya. See, dude. See, ya. See you, dude. Right on. Matty Holiday. Always uh, always brings the heat, man. But it is kind of funny, though. Like, those kids. And I got some cards still, too. Like, it is what it is. And maybe a jersey or two. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh. You know, everybody asks you for jerseys, dude. I'm like, I had, like, three last week people. Hey, man, you got an extra jersey. I'm like. <laughs> 250 bucks. Like, No. <laughs> they don't have extra jerseys, like, you know, like, like right? Like you, you give them to friends and family. They're either hung up and you know on the wall, or they're or they're gone. Oh wait, are these strangers or friends and no, family? No, it's it's there's nah, it's both. But like they'll be like, hey, do you got a, you got a jersey? Uh, and I'm like, no, but you could you can get the jersey and then I'll sign it for you. Yeah, but I'm not going to go to Johnny Max and get my jersey made and then give it to you. Like you you got to do that, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what are you going to say, Charlie? Okay, so I was trying to find this story at the end to bring it up to holiday, but I couldn't get to it because I had heard this in the last year or so, again, just because I'm now immersed in the NASCAR world. It's a similar story to what Matt Holiday said. This is from September 23rd, 2022. It's, uh, let's see, Fan Buzz. The title is Better Late Than Never. NASCAR fan gets Dale Earnhardt Jr. autographed nearly 20 years after asking for it. Yeah. And then so I had read something else, or I think Dale Jr. talked about this on his podcast, that he said at one point at his house, he was something like, and, and don't quote me on this, I know this is out there, but like he was something like two or three million pieces of mail behind. But this dude sent it in 2002, 20 years later. Really? Dale Earnhardt Jr. caught up to the point also where the stamp they sent back in the day that cost 18 cents is now what? 50, whatever it is. Yeah. But, and I, I you got to find the clip. We'll try to find it. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. took 20 years to catch up on his fan mail. So he saved all that stuff. He didn't just dump it at some point. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 18 years it took. By the way, Charlie, I did the same thing. And I can tell you the two that I remember that were hand signed, because sometimes they would stamp it or mm -hmm. you could, where it seemed personal for some reason, Chris Chambliss and Walt Williams, whose nickname was No Neck. 
I remember. I'm talking guys like Ron Hassey. I would send it to anybody. All the Tigers? <laughs> oh, dude, I probably sent out. Well, you know, I was an A's fan. I could get the oh. Tigers autographs. I got them all as Toledo Mud Hens. They'd oh, come yeah, back. Probably. Yeah. They and would that, come back and play the Mud Hens for an exhibition feeling, game. When you go to the mailbox and you and it's from a like like Steve major Bouchelle. league club or something, you're like, oh my goodness. I bet you if I went Pittsburgh back, Pirates. I have random cards from just just dudes that are like the Daniel Descalzos of 1990 and Ron 89. Pretty good. All all hit, no catch. Yep. <laughs> I think I got Terry Steinbach. Oh yeah. That's funny, man. And I, <laughs> I do funny. appreciate Holiday like being honest about it. Yeah, because I could, he did he did worry about a lot of things. Like I could see him going, you know, looking at that pile and it causing anxiety. Because deep down he was like, I probably should send it out. I'm behind. I don't have time. I'm just gonna not do any of it. But they sent it to your house. I get it at the house. Do you? <clears throat> yeah. While you're Wait. with a. With the blues or the years. or the devils, yeah, because they get right to my the... house. It goes fans? to both fans right to my house. How do they know your address? They looked it up. Well, and they still send it to my old house. Well, this is the early two thousands too, where uh, they knew where my hopefully they it knew was where I lived. harder to find out where you lived than they it knew is exactly today. where I lived, dude. <clears throat> they can just look it up, look it right up. But yeah, not returning though. Like kids do get mad at that. Like you know. Yeah. It's always a kid. Yeah. I never got mad, though. But it's nameless and faceless. It's still usually a kid. And they write that nice note out for you. you know, Handwritten. And you're re- handwritten. You're like, oh. Back you know in the day, mean? that was like 40 cents. You put two stamps in there. Yeah, dude. One for the, the sender. They, and the, I told you, a guy sent me back. cash the other day. He goes, take that cash and spend it on a charity. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How much? 250 bucks. He gave you two hundred fifty dollars, yeah. and didn't he wait? Did he want the autograph? Yeah, I, no, he gave me a jersey. I signed it, and he goes, he goes, sign it however you want, blah 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 blah. And I did something really clever on it, and I sent it back to him. And he's like, keep that money, and spin it on a charity. And I'm like, okay, and I did. Well, you, hey, you right to that charity. What was the charity? Right to that charity. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the Cam Jansen with a hot right tub to charity. That charity. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Do you guys get super follows on YouTube? Um, I don't know yet. Because people on YouTube will literally just send you money. Yeah. They'll tip you. Yeah. And I'm talking it happens on the Kenny channel. Oh, yes. All the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're yeah. talking. They tip you. We're talking right. an amount that ends up being, like, in, in I'm saying low, but in the low thousands. Yeah, man. Like, people will say, I love this story. Here's $50. Um, I wonder really? if kids see. Yes. Send- it's called Super Follow. Huh. I also, you also get, I also get people send me stuff and they're like, hey, can you get Ryan O'Reilly to sign this? And no, no, no. I'm like, I'm like, nope. Oh, you want me to go down there and wait for Ryan O'Reilly? I'm not doing that. You know, I'll sign it for you. Believe maybe it or not. a couple of times I'll sign maybe somebody else's name and send the two. Oh, you wouldn't dare. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do Believe that. Believe it or not, I get that sometimes from Bally's. And uh, anyone that would actually want something signed by me. Probably get their head examined, but if they took the time to send it, I know I'm I'm you gotta sending it back. back. You got to get back to them. <laughs> That's funny. Now, now I'll tell you the story. How's the size of your pile compared to the size of Matt Holiday's pile? It's not even a pile. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a speck of dust. One <laughs> one every five years. I think I, I told the story. This was like five years ago. Five years ago, I bought a condo right over here, and once the sale went through, and the seller saw that I was the buyer during closing, they asked for two autographed, dead serious, two autographed pictures from the Fox 2 headshots <laughs> for his nephews. I, I kid you not. Of That's Martin. awesome. No, of, I just, I go. Of Martin Kilcoin. No, and I signed so his him. his nephews were fans of watching I have Channel no too? clue. Maybe it was radio. I don't know. But he wanted two autographed That's headshots. Awesome. And I wrote to him, like, you know, this is going to be the worst gift ever oh my God. for your nephews. <laughs> I can't believe you even oh, want this. That's funny, <laughs> Cam, I hey Cam, I could choke you out with your jersey, Adam. Eh, I bet you can't. Let's see here. I wonder if kids send emails to get signed by Auto Pen. No, I, I I don't know. Oh, I I love Matty Holiday, but dude was an ass as a role model when he played. Clausy. Why? What? A dick move, not returning signed autographs. Baseball players are jerks. <laughs> hockey players get it. And there's some hockey players that don't do it too. 
<laughs> right, don't get me wrong. I told you what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, you're, you were keeping the jersey, and then when a player would, hey, let's do a jersey swap, you send them one no, of the no, kids like, sent you. It's like I get asked for jerseys all the time. Like, this might come in handy. No, nah, you, you, they'll, they're going to they'll be like, no, that, that jersey cost me money. Go ahead and sign it and bring it back. But there's still a little pile i got to get to. It's all good. <laughs> uh, Pete's have a hard time accepting that bad stuff just happens sometimes in life, even to so-called good people who do everything right. We are all looking for a reason why something bad happens. Sometimes it just happens for no reason. That's hard for humans to accept. Sharon, you're exactly right. When you see that, it makes you mad. You, when you see that, you're like, what could have what stopped this? And you're going to – I just – after after looking at that video and going step by step with it, I just think that that was pure, accidental, horrific, happens going 100 miles an hour. You have weapons on your skates. You have weapons on the boards. You have weapons in your hands. And you're going 100 miles an hour. Crazy-ass things happen. I've gotten cut so many times, you don't even know it. I almost got slashed in my wrist, got cut in my face. Got Like, it could have happened to anybody. It ain't falling into boards. Guy stepping on your bottom of a pile. Bleed out. This was just weird, man. He was going too fast to even know to get your leg up to hurt somebody. When something horrific happens, I think it's human nature to blame, to wonder yeah. why it happened, yeah, or who was responsible. And yep. sometimes it's just not the case. I know, I know, horrible. It's an accident.